subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening and welcome to south asia news line i'm lipakshi khurana here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 20th of December. Buffer stock of medicines ready, monitoring Omicron situation with experts, says India's health minister. Pakistan military has handed Sindh Balochistan to China, says Altaf Hussain on CPEC. An Islamic country's pledge fund to save off Afghanistan chaos. And now for all the details, India's Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia on Monday told the parliament a buffer stock of medicines has been arranged by the government and is monitoring the situation arising out of the cases of Omicron COVID-19 variant with experts daily. He assured India is all prepared to tackle a fresh wave if it arises. The tally of Omicron infections rose to 168 in India on Monday after Maharashtra, Delhi and Karnataka logged fresh cases of the new strain. India's Health Minister on Monday apprised the Parliament that a buffer stock of medicines has been arranged by the government and he is monitoring the situation arising out of the cases of the new COVID-19 variant Omicron with experts daily. The Health Minister said capacity of oxygen cylinders, ventilators and stock of medicines have all been raised as he highlighted precautionary measures being taken to tackle the virus spread. He said India in the next two months will also raise its vaccine production from 31 crore to 45 crore doses per month. The South Asian nation as of Monday reported 82,267 active cases of COVID-19, while the Omicron cases rose to 168 after Maharashtra, Delhi and Karnataka logged fresh infections of the new strain. हमें दिक्कत ना हो ये भी हमने व्यवस्था करके रखी है ऑक्सीजन की कैपेसिटी ऑक्सीजन प्लांट की कैपेसिटी आज बढ़ चुकी है मीनवाइल दिल्ली चीफ मिनिस्टर अरविंद केजरीवाल कॉल्ड ऑन द सेंटर गवर्नमेंट टू अलाउ बूस्टर डोजेस एज ओमिक्रॉन केसेस रोज टू 28 इन द इंडियन कैपिटल आफ्टर फोर न्यू केसेस वर रिपोर्टेड ऑन मंडे केजरीवाल सेड गिवन द राइज इन इंफेक्शंस now all positive cases in the national capital will be sent for genome sequencing for Omicron. Foreign ministers of Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyz Republic and Tajikistan called on Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi on Monday. The Central Asian foreign ministers were in Delhi for the third India-Central Asia dialogue held over the weekend, with the six nations called for immediate aid for Afghans and proposed the use of the India-run terminal at the Chabahar port in Iran as a route for trade. Foreign ministers of five Central Asian nations called on Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in capital New Delhi on Monday. Foreign ministers of Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyz Republic and Tajikistan were in New Delhi for the third India-Central Asia dialogue held over the weekend. The visit came ahead of the summit-level meeting at leaders' level in January. The leaders are also invited as chief guests for India's Republic Day celebrations and parade due next month. In the third meeting of the India-Central Asia Dialogue, Afghanistan remained the point of focus among the foreign ministers on Sunday. A joint statement issued at the end of the deliberations as part of the dialogue hosted by India's foreign minister S. J. Shankar said it was important to provide immediate humanitarian aid for Afghans. Our concerns and objectives in that country are similar. A truly inclusive and representative government, the fight against terrorism and drug trafficking, ensuring unhindered humanitarian assistance and preserving the rights of women, children and minorities. We must find ways of helping the people of Afghanistan. The dialogue also decided to explore establishing joint working groups to address issues of free movements of goods and services between India and Central Asian countries, according to the statement. 
India is looking to expand its cooperation with these energy-rich countries, abundant in oil, gas and uranium reserves and other rare metals. And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Mutahida Qawmi Movement founder leader Altaf Hussain has blamed that Pakistan's Gaulish army has agreed to place Sindh and Balochistan under the planned occupation of China in the name of China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, trading with rights of Muhajis, Sindhs and the Baloch people. He said both Pakistan and China want to loot the natural resources of the occupied territories while creating divisions among the indigenous communities. Pakistan's Mutahida Qaumi Movement or MQM's founder leader Altaf Hussain has said that the Ghoulish Army of Pakistan has agreed to place Sindh and Balochistan the under the planned occupation of China on the pretext of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, trading with the rights of Muhajir, Sindhis and the Baloch people. In a virtual address this past weekend, Altaf Hussain said Dominic and terror-sponsoring state of Pakistan and its army along with China want to loot the resources of the occupied territories while dividing the masses. Activists have long blamed the Pakistani army has killed and displaced thousands of Baloch, Sindhis and Mohajirs in recent years in Sindh and Balochistan region and these incidents have increased many fold since the launch of the CPEC. कि वो लड़ाने वाले फौजी एस्टैब्लिशमेंट के लोग वो और चाइना मजे करते रहे और सिंधी और उर्दू बोलने वाले आपस में एक दूसरे को दुश्मन समझकर लड़ते रहे Hussain, who lives in exile in London, urged Sindhis and Mohajirs, the community of Urdu-speaking immigrants who settled in Pakistan after its formation in 1947, to unite for freedom of Sindh. Islamic countries have pledged to set up a humanitarian trust fund for Afghanistan as with millions facing hunger and a harsh winter setting in, Pakistan's Prime Minister warned of chaos if the worsening emergency was not urgently addressed. Islamic countries pledged on Sunday to set up a humanitarian trust fund for Afghanistan as with millions facing hunger and a harsh winter setting in, Pakistan's Prime Minister warned of chaos if the worsening emergency was not urgently addressed. The crisis is causing mounting alarm but the international response has been muted given Western reluctance to help the Taliban government which seized power in August. My big worry is that unless action is taken immediately, and I mean immediately, because we've been saying this for now two, three months. Unless action is taken immediately, Afghanistan is heading for chaos. The trust fund announced by Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi will be set up under the aegis of the Islamic Development Bank. The conference has agreed and it, is, it was required to establish a humanitarian trust fund. Two, they've agreed, and we've all agreed, to launch a food security program for Afghanistan. Three, we collectively feel that we have to unlock financial and banking channels because the economy cannot function and people cannot be helped without banking services. Allowing Afghanistan access to reserves frozen outside the country would be key to preventing economic collapse. Participants in the meeting, which included representatives from the United Nations, United States, European Union and Japan said in a statement. But it was unclear how much the fund would contain and the meeting did not provide official recognition to the Taliban government. Acting Afghan Foreign Minister Amir Khan Mutakki said the government had restored peace and security and done much to address demands for more inclusiveness with respect for human rights, including the rights of women. However, the Taliban have faced heavy criticism for keeping women and girls out of employment and education and excluding broad sections of Afghan society from government. They have also been accused of trampling on human rights and despite their promise on amnesty targeting officials of the former administration. 
and a total of 55 Indian fishermen were arrested by Sri Lankan Navy over the past weekend for allegedly poaching in the country's territorial waters. Fishermen from both countries are arrested frequently for inadvertently trespassing into each other's waters. The issue has become a major irritant in bilateral ties. Sri Lanka has arrested a total of 55 Indian fishermen in the last two days for allegedly poaching in the country's territorial waters, an official statement by the Sri Lankan Navy said on Sunday. At least 43 Indian fishermen were arrested on Saturday, while 12 more were apprehended on Sunday, and a total of eight trawlers were seized during the operations, the statement said. Arrangements were being made to hand them over to relevant authorities for legal action after conducting their rapid antigen tests for coronavirus, it added. Meanwhile, India's Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin on Sunday wrote to Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar, seeking intervention in rescuing the apprehended fishermen from the southern state. India and Sri Lanka share an expansive oceanic border without any perceptible demarcation and fishermen on both sides ignore rules while netting their catch. Fishermen from both the countries frequently stray into each other's territory and end up spending years in jails. And moving on, the government of Maldives released a statement on Sunday over false, misguided and unsubstantiated information regarding the bilateral ties with India. In a statement, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Maldives said that it is profoundly concerned by the attempts to propagate hatred towards India. Mentioning India as one of the closest bilateral partners, it called out the involved political personalities and other individuals who spread hatred and made false allegations, jeopardizing the bilateral ties. The statement also highlighted a crucial point that spreading hatred and making false allegations regarding bilateral ties with neighboring countries can tarnish relations with allies. It also asked to refrain from spreading false information that has the potential to undermine the country's cordial relations with its neighbors and the international community. And as the cold wave conditions prevail in northern India, the mercury level has dropped to shivering levels. The chilling dip in the average temperatures has prompted everyone from men to gods to wool up to fight the cold. A chilling dip in the average temperatures across northern India prompted everyone from men to gods to wool up to fight the cold on Monday. Temperature dipped up to minus 15 degrees Celsius in India's Himalayan Ladakh territory. Some people were seen enjoying ice hockey and also lit Himalayan heaters in houses to fight the cold. Today, the temperature has increased a lot. Today, it is minus 15. So, yesterday, it was also minus 21 degrees. Now, it is said that after 21 December, it will be more cold. In neighboring Jammu city of Jammu and Kashmir territory, people were seen wrapped up in woolens while sipping tea to fight the cold. The weather department has predicted light to a moderate spell of snowfall from December 23 to 25. Meanwhile, in central Bhopal city, priests wrapped idols of gods in woolens to save the deities from cold. It is a common sight to see deities adorned with woolen or velvet fabrics in India as they are believed to have life in them by many devotees. मौसम राजधानी भोपाल में बहुत सर्दी का लसीत लहर चल रही है साहब ये सीत लहर में भगवान परमात्मा को भी ऊनी वस्त्र सर्दी के हिसाब से वस्त्र पहनाए जाते हैं। Cold wave also swept parts of capital New Delhi on Monday with minimum temperature of 3.1 degrees Celsius recorded at the Lodi Road Observatory, according to the Regional Meteorological Center. Cold wave conditions have been prevailing in Delhi for the last two days owing to a strong dry northwesterly cold wind. To beat the chilling cold, it is common to come across people sitting across a fire to warm themselves these days. South Asia's winters are not as cold as other regions such as North America, but the millions of poor here are hit harder because they live in the open and do not have enough warm clothes and often die. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. 
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन